In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome to the, welcome to the Brendan Option, coming to you courtesy of Immaculata Productions. Uh, I'm Father Brendan Kilcoyne. If you like our work, would you hit the subscribe button? Uh, if you want to send us a few, a few quid, would you use Patreon, PayPal? Um, keep us in the prayers, please, and keep the constructive comments coming. They also help the algorithm. The good book. The Bible. And Bible is just the Greek for book. The book. Now, it's not really a book. You know that. It's really a library. Yeah? With many books. It's really a library that was put together over many, many years. It's the inspired word of God. Yet it had human authors in the immediate human sense on the ground. As Jordan Peterson is showing lately, it has never lost its power to fasten it. But for us, for believers, Catholic and Protestant, and as regards part of what we call the Old Testament, the larger part, the, the Jews for whom we got our Lord Jesus Christ, for us, it is the inspired word of God. Now the whole question of inspiration is an interesting one and we could talk about it perhaps in another, in another episode. But it's important to be clear on that. It is not simply an ancient text for us. It is not simply um, a, great, a great myth uh, put down on paper as for instance with the Iliad or the Odyssey. And myths are very important much more than you might think. But this is much more than myth again. It is the living word of God. As we are told in the scriptures, it cuts more finely than any double-edged sword. It is alive and active. Now, begins with Genesis, ends with Revelation or Apocalypse, we owe most of what we call the Old Testament to the Jews. They divide their scriptures, which is most of our Old Testament, in they call it the Tanakh. So that it's the Torah, that's the law, direction or guidance. Yeah. And then the Nevi'im, which are the prophets. And then the Ketuvim, which are the writings. The Jews have a whole body of commentary and discussion on the Torah from going back thousands of years. They call it the Talmud and they refer to the Sea of Talmud. It's a fantastic image. I want you to take that image and apply it to the Bible. I think I've said this before. So the Bible is a library, but you could also regard it as a vast ocean. It's the ocean of ins divine inspiration and God's word. And I want to s encourage you, if you are not doing it already, to start um, that, that uh, let's say, a pastime, which is at present perhaps confined to a few odd souls, which is swimming in the ocean every day, hot or cold or lukewarm. In Ireland, we're so far north that you'd think that we would be actually very cold indeed, but we do have the Gulf Stream, and that ameliorates it to some extent, although the waters off the west coast where I'm from are very cold indeed. I would start, if I were you, and finish with the Gospels. I think that's the best place for a Christian to start. Now, a devout Jew wouldn't even be going there, but we believe that the Messiah, the Anointed One, yeah, the Anointed One, that he has come. Hmm? Mashach means he anointed. The Messiah, the Anointed One, he has come. The Jews don't believe that. They're still waiting for him. But we believe he has come. And he's, he's Jesus of Nazareth, who is called Christ. Start nibbling. Take Mark, who's the earliest and the shortest of the Gospels. Take Mark 
and start nibbling. You cannot go wrong because no matter where you start in the sea of scripture, no matter where you start, you are swimming in salt water, so to speak. You are swimming in the truth. You are swimming in the inspired word of God. Now, it may take more work than that to understand what you have been told because God uses the medium of uh, human authors um, in the immediate sense, right? And human literary genres and all the rest of it, okay? So it will take a little bit more work than that. If you're really serious about it, it's going to take a lot more work than that. But you need to stop cheating yourself of this wonderful experience to bathe daily in the word of God. So start with the scriptures. And what is the point of this? What is the point of the whole scriptures? I believe, as the church teaches, that the entirety of the sea of scripture, the entirety, from Genesis to Apocalypse, and crystallizing in the four Gospels, particularly, is a promise of, a rumor of, a talk of, an expectation of, an encounter with, and a reflection on this one man. The whole of the scriptures, the whole of the library, the whole of the Biblios, the book, one man, one Jew, who lived approximately 2,020 years, give or take, ago. And that is why you're going to go into the sea. You're going to go into the sea like Jonah to be swallowed by the whale. You need to go into the sea to die to yourself and be born again to God's word. Now, I don't mean born again. You know, like, you know, all right, you know what I mean. You need to get in there and be changed and converted by God's word. Will you meet, are there dangerous things there that may eat you? Yes, there are. Yeah. The spiritual journey is the hardest, the longest, and the most treacherous. It is also the most rewarding by a billion miles, speaking figuratively, far more in fact, and it is ultimately the only journey worth taking, which is why some people enter enclosed monasteries and never come out. Now, I want you to start, I want you to buy a pair, buy, you can buy a wetsuit if you want, and I do think that you should start heading for the beach, no matter what the weather, every day. Immerse yourself, or at least paddle, at least wash your feet, do a little shrimping in the sea of God's word and of his love for you. Shalom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.